general, my research revolves around boron nitride nanomaterials, just trying to understand kind of how we can manipulate them, how we can work with them. And these materials are really interesting because they can form kind of the building blocks for some really advanced materials with properties that include being extremely strong, very resistant to thermal and chemical uh, oxidation and so on. And so we wanted to, we wanted to be able to understand how we can disperse them and manipulate them in solution. And so for this particular project, I was working with boron nitride nanotubes and we used a fluorescent surfactant that we developed to be able to disperse them into solution as well as track their motion and see um, basically how, how they move, try to understand how rigid they were, how different confinements and things might impact that and so on. The original things we saw were these teeny tiny little dots because one of the biggest things we had to overcome was figure out how to get actually long tubes into solution. We could get pretty small ones in at first. And so I remember the first time I saw one that actually looked like a tube floating through solution, I was so excited. I like ran into Dr. Marti's office. <laughs> and boron nitride has been my work for the last five years. So I love them. I think they're really interesting. So we all know carbon, it's been around for a while now. and. A lot of the work in Dr. Pasquale's lab, who's one of our, who's our collaborator on this, um, has involved making those carbon fibers and things like that that are very strong and electrically conductive. Boron nitride nanotubes are kind of thought to be carbon nanotube sister materials, so they have properties that can go together and actually um, benefit each other. So, like I mentioned, uh, boron nitride nanotubes are electrically insulating while carbon is electrically conducting. And so people have talked about things like wires and things like that that could be made from the two of them combined. But they're also much more thermally and chemically resistive than carbon is. So a lot of the applications that I've seen people kind of working towards is actually working with NASA to bring these things to space and use them as some sort of shield or things like that from radiation, from heat um, and so on. And so there's a lot of really interesting applications that we just need to kind of get a better idea of how we can manipulate these to produce those larger uh, materials from them.